All right, sit tight. So this project begins over at the chop saw, where I can cut to final length the long section of the garden box, which is approximately 8 foot long. Then I'm going to drill a whole bunch of pocket holes into it, and I'm going to apply some glue along the back edge. This is so there's no squeeze out on the front. These pocket holes and glue is going to be the main structure for the long sections of the garden box, as well as the short side. This project uses these cedar decking boards, which are 5 quarter by 6 by 8 foot long, as well as 2 by 6 by 8 SPF construction lumber. Next, I can use my homemade deep breech C-clamp to set up a stop block at my miter saw station, where I'm going to be chopping to length the short sides, which is set at 30 inches. Next up, I can use my Craig pocket hole jig to drill out two of the boards with three pocket holes each. These three pocket holes are going to provide the clamping force as the glue dries between them, as well as a mechanical bond to hold everything together. Now, as you may notice here, I didn't edge joint any of this before gluing it together, so it kind of bowed up in the middle, so as the glue dried, I just put my vise on top of it to weigh it down. Next, I can begin final assembly of the box portion of this project by lining up the two long ends and the short end between with a clamp holding it in place. Then I can drill out six holes and drive six three inch screws into each corner. Next up, I can rip off a one and a quarter inch piece of two by six pine. This is gonna be used to hold the slats in place along the long sides of the cedar walls. To attach these, I start by laying down a whole whack of wood glue come back with some two inch brad nails. This is simply done for alignment as this board was a little bit warped. And then I drill out all the holes required for a whole whack of two inch construction screws. Back over at the chop saw, I have my deep reach C clamp stop block set up on my miter saw station where I'm gonna be cutting these pieces down to 32 inches. Some of these boards will have one inch ripped off the ends to make them the same length on both sides of the box. Next up is assembling the outside corner legs. I first lay down a bead of glue and use the brad nail to hold everything in place. When I come back, drill four holes and drive in three inch screws along the edge. Next over at the garden box body itself, I can lay down a whole whack of glue on both sides of the box, making sure that the glue doesn't go outside the bounds of the legs as I don't want to clean up any squeeze out. Then I can drive in one screw on an angle to kind of suck the leg into the corner as I come back, drill all the holes, and then drive in all the two inch screws. I did try to keep some kind of pattern in all the legs to try to make some kind of symmetry within it. I didn't go quite as anal retentive as Brad Rodriguez with my screw placement, but it's at least looking somewhat decent. The center leg on both sides is just a single board cut to 32 inches and glued and screwed in place with two inch screws. Then over at the chop saw, I can break down my two by six slats that go along the bottom to just under 30 inches, leaving about an eighth of an inch short for a little bit of wiggle room. As you can see, the middle board gets installed first. This is actually cut to exactly 30 inches as it presses out the side and makes rooms for the slats along the bottom. You can see I'm using some quarter inch plywood with blocks attached to them as they hang over the edge and act as spacers as I install all these slats with three inch screws. Next up, I can lay out the poly vapor barrier, which I had left over from doing my basement renovations. And I don't know if this is quite the proper thing to be using for this. You might want to do a little more research into that. I know some people use geotextile material. Some people use black plastic. I don't know what the real difference is, but I figure anything to kind of just keep the dirt in and the moisture off the wood as much as possible is the good thing. As you can see, as I'm installing this plastic vapor barrier along the garden box, I'm using a staple gun. And you would think to yourself, this is counterintuitive. We're putting a bunch of holes in there and it's just going to leak. Well, that's the point. We are going to poke some holes in this after for drainage. So it's not really that much of a worry that we install it with the staples right now. Next back at the table saw, I can rip some cedar boards in half. This is going to act as the trim for along the top side of this garden box to pretty it up and protect our arms as we lean over the edge doing some fine gardening. First up, the long edges get mitered on both ends and then installed in place with some glue and then a whole whack of two inch screws which are drilled out first as we don't want to split this thin cedar. If you are interested in making this or another project you've seen on my channel, you can always go to diybuilds.ca and download a free set of plans for any of my projects. 
Next, the last piece of the puzzle is the short rails which need a miter on both ends. Now we can measure and cut these to size now that the other two long rails are in place. Apply a bunch of glue to the miter itself and then it's the same thing installed by drilling out the holes and two inch screws. Next step was to poke three holes with a screwdriver in between each one of the slats for water drainage. Then after that it was time to fill it up full of dirt. Before this though, I did go ahead and install six patio stones under each one of the feet and level the box as best I could. And with that, the project is complete. This is the water. What you got there, Giles? I got the boat. Oh. You can't beat the real thing.